Joining us now, more information on Bruce Orr's testimony he is Texas Congressman John Ratcliffe. Uh, and from the Hill, John Solomon, we'll start with you, Congressman. Uh, let us talk about what we learned today. Is it true? Did Bruce Orr ever testify before Robert Mueller? Did that come up today? It, it did come up, Sean. I have to be careful. I know your viewers want information, but there's a confidentiality agreement. But, um, but you have good sources. I listened to your monologue, and uh, you're on track with respect to Well, Bruce I heard Orr's he never testified to Robert Mueller, and you're smiling, so I'm guessing that's a, a good <laughs> guess. Uh, now, what would, John, wouldn't that mean a lot? If he didn't testify before Mueller, considering what we have 60 some odd pages of notes, all the meetings and the fact that he said in t under testimony today that, in fact, this steel dossier could never be used in a court of law, but it was used as the basis for a FISA warrant to get FISA uh, court uh, approval on, on spying on Americans. Yeah, I, yeah, the, I will. The I'm, law make, I'm sorry, sir. Go ahead. I didn't know which John you were talking to. <laughs> uh, I'll ask John Solomon first. John Solomon. I'll tell you, sir. Yeah. Uh, listen, many of the members I talked to said they thought that was one of the most important revelations today, that Bruce Orr said he's never heard, nor has his wife ever heard from uh, Special Counsel Mueller. If Mueller wanted to get to the bottom of this, the questions that Congress has raised that are now in the public, whether the FISA warrant was legitimate and the origins of this investigation were legitimate, you would think at the very least he'd want to talk to Bruce Orr and find out why was he playing the intermediary role. I was told today emphatically Bruce Orr has said he was never interviewed. I think that raises a lot of questions for people in Congress. What is Bob Mueller really up to? He worked that we have 63 pages of text, emails, and handwritten notes, Congressman, between Orr and Steele. Steele had already been fired for lying and leaking. He got paid not only by Clinton through Fusion GPS and the DNC through Fusion GPS, but he also was on the record as hating Donald Trump, saying he was desperate that Trump not get elected and passionate about him not being president. Um, did he comment on any of that today? He did. I, I can uh, probably summarize it the best way uh, like this, Sean. Um, when the Department of Justice walks into the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court and says, uh, we want a warrant to spy on an American citizen, and the central piece of our evidence in our case is a, a dossier, um, there's an obligation to say, oh, and by the way, the number four person in our organization uh, and his wife had major prominent operational roles with respect to how that dossier was put together, how the FBI received it, and by the way, they were paid handsomely by third parties for that. Those are what we call material well, let me ask facts. You this. The he, material he, facts that have to be disclosed, and um, in this case, they weren't. But he told, he said today, as I understand it, that in fact, he told the FBI that his wife had put this together, and they well, still was, used him as a back channel. So they never told the FISA court that piece of evidence. They never told so, the FISA court who paid for the dossier. So the only conclusion is now we know it's irrefutable at this point that the FISA court was repeatedly lied to in four separate, separate FISA applications. Is that a true statement? Well, here's what he said, uh, or here's what I can tell you about, about his testimony today. Um, my real question walking in, Sean, was what did the FBI and the Department of Justice know about Bruce Orr and his wife? The FBI knew, his, I'm told. His testimony today was that uh, he gave us a list of a half a dozen senior FBI and Department of Justice officials that he told of his involvement, his wife's involvement, all of the details of their interactions with Christopher Steele, with Glenn Simpson, with the payment. And uh, these are names, Sean, that would be familiar to you. I've heard you say some of these names on your program uh, before. And I can tell you as someone that has reviewed the FISA applications, the unredacted versions, I can't talk about uh, what's in there, but I can tell you what's not in there. And what's not in there is any information about uh, Nellie and Bruce Orr. Well, so basically, I want to go back to my question, though. The FISA, a fraud was committed multiple times on a FISA court. They purposely withheld information to the court as it relates to if the FBI knew that, in fact, uh, Steele, that it, in fact, put this together and that he'd never verified it, and if they never told the court that Hillary paid for it, isn't that a fraud committed on the court? Isn't that lying to a court? If Bruce Orr's testimony today was truthful and accurate, then what you're saying about the information that was not submitted to the FISA court and should have been 
it's a big problem. A big problem, or is it against the law to lie to a court? Well, as an, uh, a former officer of the court, you have an obligation to have a full and complete disclosure of facts. And If I um, lied to the court, do you think you could get me out of prison? <laughs> <laughs> hey, there is nothing more sacrosanct than American civil liberties. Right. And so what we're talking about here... I agree with you. Here, I wouldn't think yeah. of it. I, you know, so, I pay my, just like you pay your taxes. Do it. Uh, Just if do I, it. If I, if I were one of those folks that were identified today, and I can tell you that in at least one case, one of the names that he identified for us today uh, signed one of those FISA applications, um, I'd retain a really good lawyer. Mm -hmm. I think his name's J.C., but I'm just guessing. There's one of them anyway. Uh, thank you, Congressman, for being with us. Uh, John you Solomon, Thanks let's for go to your me. breaking report because you go into great detail. Here we have, you know, you tie it all together as it relates to uh, uh, this Russian oligarch and Bruce Orr and Steele and the Department of Justice. I'll let you give a summary of this report. Yeah, listen, the FBI had a 10-year relationship with Oleg Deripaska, uh, uh, the, the head of the largest aluminum company in Russia. He funded $25 million rescue mission for the FBI to try to rescue a former agent. That's a good thing. Uh, in 2015, Orr showed up and asked him some questions about organized crime in Russia. He tried to give him some guidance. In 2016, a more consequential event occurred. The FBI showed up in September 2016, one month before the FISA application, and they said, listen, we think Paul Manafort is colluding with Russia to help Trump win the election. We now know where they got that information. They got it from Christopher Steele. That's in his dossier. And Deripaska tells him, a trusted guy who's been with him, helping him for 10 years, I'm telling you, it's preposterous. It's not happening. You got you, it wrong. You wrote in this you, piece that collusion yeah. occurred, Russian collusion. Yeah. And you tell yeah. a tale of Or Steele, Deripaska, the FBI, and DOJ. Tie right. it all together so everybody understands completely. You know, we, we talk about any contact with Russia must be terrible. Well, the FBI had lots of contacts with Russians, and many times they got benefit from it, right? They got a help in trying to locate a former agent. They got information waving them off bad intelligence. But here's the real problem with collusion that, that goes into the FISA warrant. When, when Deripaska tells them, hey, you're wrong about Manafort, I can tell you, you're wrong about Manafort, they had an obligation a month later to go to the court and say, well, listen, Steele's telling us this, but this Russian guy we've had a lot of good record with, he's telling us something different. There's no evidence that occurred. Another thing that Steele... Uh, and and that by the way, Deripaska, this is not just any oligarch. This is a no. friend of Putin's. This is a guy that frequently he, appeared with Putin. If you look at video clips, you'll see him in many of the clips with Putin when there are public meetings. He's a very So it's interesting that... All of these other players, yeah. Bruce or others, they're all meeting with Deris Pasca, who's friends yeah. with Putin. This is supposed to be about collusion, and we're talking about taxi medallions and, and bank loan applications now. It, it, uh, for people who are frustrated by the case, they see this double standard, right? Democrats can collude with the Russians, get whatever information they need. They can buy it. They can hire a British intelligence guy. But when Republicans have a meeting with a Russian, it suddenly sounds like it's criminal. Yeah. That's been what's frustrated people so much about the, the unfairness and the telling of this story so far. Congressman, we'll give you the last word on this tonight. Well, as a former federal prosecutor, uh, I got to tell you uh, what I heard today in Bruce Orr's testimony was uh, shocking, alarming, and disappointing. Uh, these types of things didn't happen in the Justice Department where I worked. And, um, you know. Uh, let, let me ask the question another way, Congressman. We're running out of time. You're a former prosecutor. And yes, sir. I have a lot of respect for prosecutors. It's a hard job, especially people that don't go on witch hunts and they believe in equal justice under the law. Is there anybody that could do what happened here that's watching this show tonight that could omit purposely key information in an application to get a warrant to spy on, in this case, an opposition party, campaign associate in the lead up to an election, and not be arrested and put in jail? Those people that put their name on those FISA warrant applications Aren't they swearing by the truthfulness, the veracity of those applications? And if they knowingly withhold information in those applications, aren't they really pre, isn't this premeditated fraud on a court? Everybody that signed them, did they commit fraud on a court? My opinion on this is, uh, Sean, that there's a guy named uh, John Huber, who's been, uh, he's the U.S. attorney for Utah, who's been tasked by Jeff Sessions to investigate uh, well, FISA he? abuse. Well, my recommendation to Mr. Huber would be, would be uh, for him to contact my office and ask for a copy of the transcript of Bruce Orr, and I'll make his job a lot easier. 
Can I, um, can I have a copy of it? <laughs> not yet. Okay. Uh, uh, but thank you, Congressman. We appreciate you it. Uh, John Solomon, great reporting.